Hi, and welcome to the Python PDB tutorial. This is a short overview and presentation of PDB's features. It's a built-in debugger. It's shipped with Python. It works out of the box, and it doesn't require any additional modules. You may wonder why you need this when there are all sorts of IDEs which give you a graphical representation of the program state and icons and bells and whistles. Well, there are a few cases in which PyDB is a better choice. For example, if you are debugging some server-side application, you have to realize that the server doesn't have a screen, a keyboard, you only have access to it via SSH or some other remote access protocol. So there's no way for you to run a graphical program and interact with the program uh, like you do normal debugging with your other software. In other cases, for example, you are using somebody else's computer and they do have an IDE, but their IDE is configured to meet their preferences, which are completely different from yours. And sometimes, let's say you're using a freshly installed system and there is no development environment at all, except just the Python interpreter itself. Your next question is, how do I use PyDB? Well, the answer is very simple. You have to import the PyDB module and call the setTrace function from it. Let me show you an example. You are now looking at a chunk of code from a server uh, written in Python's twisted framework. And I import PDB and I call setTrace at this line. And this means that whenever the server runs and it reaches this point, I will be switched to the PDB prompt and I can run a bunch of different commands from it and interact with my program, change its state and so on. Let's give this a try. I'm going to run the server. It says that it's running at port 829. Now let me use telnet to connect to that port. I see that a connection is established and the server shows me some debug information as well. So let me send something. For example, I pressed a key and it printed some more debug info. It has received one byte. I can see that this line has now been executed. And instead of, instead of going further, it is currently stuck at this line. And you see that the command prompt has PDB in front. So it's, in, it's a sign of the fact that I am in the debugger. And here are some handy commands which you will most likely find uh, very useful in your daily debugging practices. So first of all, there's L. It prints you a bunch of source code and highlights the current line. So you see this arrow, it indicates that we are about to execute line 39. And the nice part is that we also see a few lines above and a few lines below the current line. So it's a good thing because it enables us to see the big picture and figure out what's gonna happen next, make some predictions and see what the state of the program is prior to hitting this line. Another handy feature is W, it means where, and it gives us a printout of the stack trace so we can see not just the current function data received, but also all the other functions which were called prior to this one. You can also use another handy command, which is A, it stands for arguments. It indicates that the function we are currently in was called with the following arguments and their values are for example self is a pointer and data is equal to l and where this came from notice that the function is data received and it has two arguments and down here we see the values of those arguments you can also um, print values by typing the variable name, for example, data, and it shows me this. It looks like a one or like an L, or maybe it's a capital I. So I can um, 
I can also view the type of this one. I see it's a string. Oh, well, it could have been a capital I or an L or a one, and there would still be a string. But anyway, you got the idea. The point is that I can not only see the value of a variable, but I can also run other commands and they are being executed right here on the spot, even though they are not part of the source code itself. Um, what else? Well, I can set breakpoints using the command called B. So let's say B and 34 will set a breakpoint at line 34. And the debugger indicates that that is the case. So if I go back to the source code, I can see that it will stop at this line if there is some kind of an exception. The other basic commands you are interested in are n, which is next, and it moves on to the next line in the code without executing it. And it is now about to call a function called parse tcp request feed data into that function, and the result will be a tuple of the form with three elements and I will unpack the tuple and take those values and assign them to message type, payload and meta. So let me press S to step inside the parse tcp request function. I can press L again and I see where I am now, the function parse tcp request, let's hit N and it took the request at the input. I can I can view its value and you see it's this one. And I can continue executing lines, for example, this one, it's through an error. So I can keep on pressing N and stepping through the code line by line, or I can press C and continue until I reach the breakpoint. And uh, if you remember, the breakpoint was set at line 34. So you can imagine that it went inside this function, then it got out of it. And now we're back here and currently stopped at this point. Let's see what other commands there are to try. Uh, there is PP, it stands for pretty print. In case you are um, dealing with a complex structure, for example, a dictionary or a list one of the elements of which is a dictionary or a list inside a list. And it would be better if you wouldn't view all of that as one line, it's going to be difficult to read, but you can do PP and it's going to print it in a more human readable way. There is of course H, it stands for help and it gives you some, a summary of what else there is. And as you can see, there are many, 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 many things to play with. You can set conditional breakpoints. Uh, you can play with different loops. And, uh, well, the possibilities are very, very broad. You have to read the manual to see how, how to play with this more in more detail. And, uh, well, one last function I'm going to show you is Q. It stands for quit which interrupts the debugger and that's it. So as you can see, PDB is a very handy mechanism. It's a standard Python feature. It's very handy when debugging server side programs. And even though it doesn't have any syntax highlighting or any graphical widgets like normal debuggers do, it's still very handy. And sometimes it helps you fix a problem fast without uh, firing up fancy IDEs, which take a lot of RAM and are slow. So I hope I've convinced you that PDB is a handy instrument and I wish you luck in debugging your future code.